Hey there, welcome to the Jeff and Heidi Show, where you're going to have the opportunity to listen to and learn from everyday entrepreneurs. All righty, welcome. Enjoy this. Uh, welcome everyone to the Jeff and Heidi Show. I'm excited today to have Clifford Big Cat Starts with us. Um, really excited for this interview. I've got to know Clifford over the last little bit, and I'm just really excited for him to share his story with us. Um, he's he's done a number of exciting things in his life, and he's got some really cool things happening right now. So welcome, Clifford, and why don't you give a, just a brief introduction of yourself? Hey, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Heidi, for having me on. I appreciate it. Um, ultimately, what I want to do in my life is live the hell out of it because we're only promised one and we might as well just live it. Uh, as I've taken my journey from personal training to professional fighter to now entrepreneur, I've been going through the process and learning as I've gone. But the biggest thing people miss is just taking action in life and going all out in, in their life. And so I'm here to remind people, yeah, you're all gonna die and it's okay. Let's just live the hell out of our life. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you. So let, let's just take a step back. You graduated in kinesiology in 2005 and then kind of tell us the path that you took and including the fighting part. I, I do want to definitely talk about that because, you know, I, I've, I've met people before that have tried the MMA, MMA, done some of that stuff, but no, you were, you were big time. So let's, mm -hmm. let's just kind of go through that a little bit and talk about that. Yeah, so the biggest thing I say is be as present as you can in your life. You know, show up and live in the present. And so when I got out of ASU, I went into personal training. The reason I did that was I was a former fat kid, you know, and I ended up taking a little bit over 80 pounds off of my body. And I wanted other people to feel what I felt because it felt great to accomplish that. And I learned something as I went through the journey because when you're younger, you think you have it all figured out. <laughs> right. And I yes. really thought it, it, I really thought, I'm like, oh, they just don't know the strategy on how to lose the weight. I'll just give them the strategy. And so it was like, yeah, this is how you lose weight. And I learned really, really fast that no, it's not always just the strategy. There's an accountability piece and there's a mindset piece. And so I got better at my craft from just working with a lot of people, really honing in and listening to the stories that they were telling themselves and why they weren't taking the actions they needed to take and how they may have failed so consistently in their life. They're playing that in their rec that record player in their head that I'm a failure and I can't, I'm good at one thing, but I'm not good at this thing. And the truth is you can be good in whatever you choose to be good at. You just have to go out there, do your best, and learn from the experience. And so when I went through that, um, I don't know why the, the hair got up my butt to try professional fighting. I felt it was something very, very hard to do. I felt everybody said they were a professional fighter. And so I wanted to give it a try. I wanted to see how I would do in it. And I sucked. <laughs> I sucked when I first started. And I, I learned it's not just two guys punching each other. In fact, for me, it was one guy missing a lot and getting punched repeatedly. And so, <laughs> the learning, yeah, it was a learning experience, to say the least. To just be like, oh, man, I thought it was pretty easy to hit another human being. I didn't think it was that hard to do. <laughs> no, it's kind of hard. And so, yeah. <laughs> It sucked. Yeah, the first, the, first, the first actual sparring match really, really sucked. And after that, it was like, I want to get good at this. Like, that's where I was just like, I want to get good at this. And so I trained my ass off. I figured out how to put it together. I got the right coaching. I put things together. And it was really, what an experience and what a ride it was overall. Hey, buddy. It was just a <laughs> heck of an experience to go through that entire process of yeah. not being good at something to being one of the top people at that thing. It's fun to do. Well, yeah, because when you, when you said I wasn't good at it, I, I thought you were saying you never were. And I'm like, well, 
that can't be all true because I just watched <laughs> a fight that was a title fight. And if you're not good, you don't get in a title fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm a big believer. I'm a big believer in you can be good at anything, anything you put your mind to. If you put your mind to it that you're going to be good at this thing, you can be good at it. Now, different, there's different ways to go about being good at it, but you will find your way if you put enough energy into it. And so I found my way because I put, a, I put a lot of energy into it. And so how, how does that reflect now? So now that you're in a position where you're coaching and still training people and stuff, how does that reflect? Because you even said, you know, you do your best and learn from that experience and stuff. And that's easy for someone to say, but how do you get your people that you're coaching and working with to actually believe that? Well, ultimately, I, I think life comes down to three pieces, and that's you learn it, you teach it, and then you inspire people. And to get to that inspirational stage, you have to learn something. You have to really go into what you're trying to learn and, and put your heart and your soul into that. And then you're able to teach that thing that you've learned. But then you take it a step further, which is inspiration. And to me, inspiration is the ability to be the critical thinking power that you are. You're a critically thinking powerhouse. And it's up to us to use those facilities that we've been built with. And so when it comes down to putting it together, figuring it out, no, not everyone has the answers. Even me being an entrepreneur, I'm going to be a high level entrepreneur because I'm going to just do the same strategies I did for fighting. But for a fellow entrepreneur who may be going through a similar path as me, the answers might not be exactly the same, but they can use that as a blueprint to move them in the direction that they need to move into. But there's going to be hardship in anything that you do and anything that you become. There's, there's the consequences that you have to pay out. I just do my best to remind people of that piece. They can remember the good piece and the bad piece, and then they can take the actions that they need to take. Because I think too often we're all taught about, oh, the, well, all these bad things can happen. You can get knocked out. You can lose. Yeah, you can. But all these good things can happen. You can win. You can be on top of the world. You can be a, ch a champion. Yeah, you can. You can have both. But you have to, when you see both of them clearly, then it makes it easier to deal with the problems that you have in front of you. And I, I really talk on faith, like having the faith to do it, to just take that leap. And that's what I remind people to do every single day is just take a leap of faith. Do the best that you can every day. Grow a little so bit more every day. Is that what you're doing as an entrepreneur is, is coaching people to, to, to be better in their, as an entrepreneur or what, what exactly are you doing as a, an so, entrepreneur? Yeah. So ultimately it's like, tra it's transformational coaching, which is similar to life coaching. Mm -hmm. So I help people get fit mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. And when people can see the blueprint and really understand, okay, be careful. Son. <laughs> Hit the back of my head. <laughs> When you can really see the blueprint and take a, take a moment to say, okay, this is what I need to work on in my life, right? I think it's so important to remember that the person who's telling you to work on your life is also working on theirs. So we're mm -hmm. all on this journey together. Right. But I have to hold myself to a certain standard, always. And so I hold myself to that standard to remind the clients that I work with the transformational process to hold themselves to that same standard. Well, it's, yeah, it's wonderful to have a more of a holistic approach to it. You're not just working yeah. on one, one thing because everything is connected. And, and um, I, I know just, I was an athlete in college and um, like we, we didn't have, and for women, we didn't have trainers until the, I was like right after title nine. That's how old I am. <laughs> but yeah. but yeah. The, uh, we, we finally got a trainer like my junior year and somebody who pushed us. And it, it just, I mean, just the difference it made in, in all of our abilities, but um, I, and, and, and the mindset, because I know like um, I had 
I, I've never had a weight problem, but they're like, okay, you've got to get down to this much, this body fat level. And mm. I was like, or I had to run extra after practice. I hate running. So, yeah. so I, I, I just, I, I started looking for other ways to do it. So I cut out dairy, I cut out weed, I changed my diet. I, you know, and, and I did other things that, that helped me get to the point that they wanted me to get just so I wouldn't have to run. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. But, but it's amazing when you have, when, when you do have somebody holding you accountable and you've never had that before, it really is game changing. Yeah, it makes a big difference. And the cool thing that you said is you found a different way that worked for you because <laughs> different things work for different people. You know, and sometimes they don't take the time to really be aware of what works for them, where their strengths are and where their weaknesses are. And what a coach and a guide does is they help you reflect on you and they give you the space to really look at yourself and go, oh, well, maybe I can try this or maybe I can try it this way. Or, oh, this is pretty cool. And that mindset shift, too, the mindset shift of, yeah, you can have anything you want. You absolutely can, but it comes with a consequence. And that's okay. If you're willing to pay for the consequence to get to where you want to go, go after it. You know, that I, I love how you talk about mindset. And the thing that's interesting about this is how you and I met. When we interviewed Jesse T., he has a poster right behind his head that said mindset on it. And yeah. that's who, that's who introduced me to you. So mm -hmm. I love it. I mean, I don't know if that's coincidence or it's because that's how you two know each other. But um, I guess let, let's talk about that a little bit too, is with what you're doing and just as entrepreneur in general, mm -hmm. let's talk about the power of networking and the power of, what that can do for an entrepreneur to expand their network and meet people and build their businesses. What's your experience with that? So ultimately networking is the most powerful piece in this entire game for a couple reasons. One, you have a skill set. Well, all three of us right now have our own skill sets and you guys have information that I can use as wisdom to move myself forward. And I have information that you can use as wisdom to move yourselves forward. And when a person really looks at that completely and looks at that framework of, wow, it all comes down to relationships. Uh, we were talking about how we can get general and then the general can become specific and then the specific can become general again. And ultimately what people are looking for is four basic needs. And we've actually, manufacturedly created the, the fourth need, which is health, wealth, relationships, and then entertainment, you know? And, and at one time, entertainment, like we as Americans, we have it really, really nice to be able to say, you know, I could really use some entertainment in my life. Like at one time it was like, let's just survive. <laughs> let's, let's survive as much as we can. So now we're at such a position to where entertainment becomes an important piece. But the most important piece of all of those is going to be relationships. It's really, there's nothing better than having a solid foundation of a relationship and no one can understand it unless they've actually really felt it. Having someone really genuinely be there for them and that person being there for them as well. Like, I know Jeff, you have some children. Heidi, do you have any kids? I have a son who is 28 and is in, uh, and he's married and out of the house and, but I don't have grandkids or anything yet. <laughs> okay. Okay. Very cool. And so I, I look at relationships as even, even before I became an entrepreneur, relationships were super important to me because you can't, there's, there's no way to replicate it. You can only take care of it and grow it as much as you can. You know, you take care of it and you grow it as much as you can and you watch the power behind it. Everything that we do comes down to our relationships. And I didn't Absolutely. even realize how important that was for entrepreneurship. And I'm glad that I, I know that now because I was doing that before I became an entrepreneur. Relationships come first and foremost. That's actually what kind of got me out of fighting you know i had my kid and i had to make a decision and i felt it wasn't it wasn't i i still felt like i was in my prime 
but it wasn't a, sa a safe decision for this kid jumping behind me over here. <laughs> <laughs> He's adorable. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You know, and that's a, that's a great point. And I think that's something that's really important right now. You know, before, before we uh, started this uh, interview, the three of us were talking about some of the situations that are happening right now with our businesses and with uh, coronavirus and Not how yet. that's impacting. And I think this is probably now as much or more than ever where these relationships are important because, yeah. you know, there, there's so many people struggling right now. There's so many people that don't know where to go. And the more and better and solid relationships you have, the more options you're going to be able to discover. And that's something I've noticed. I mean, I, I look at who we've had on, on the podcast. I look at who's in our inner circle mastermind and so much of it is all starting to intertwine. I mean, mm. Clifford, uh, two weeks ago, we didn't know each other at all, but it's because yeah. we met Jesse T and he makes that introduction and you know, you never know where those go. And I, I think that's incredible. And I think so many people are going to benefit from that if they'll look at building relationships as one of their solutions to getting out of these tough times. Yeah. 100% agree. And I think what's so important for people to realize, um, relationships are just like anything else. It's habits, right? So if you practice the habits of having healthy relationships, then it will be something that you become. I don't think it's something that you're not built to just have great relationships right away. And what gets people in trouble is they feel they have to do something. You should never feel you have to do something because then it just, it comes off very unauthentic. But if you practice at being the best, then you'll get there. And that's what it comes down to, is just consistently practicing healthy relationships because you will 100% benefit from it. And you make such a great point, Jeff, because when this process has, this is a, a weird, dark time. It's scaring the heck out of a lot of people. Uh, I love the people that I work with because they were looking out for me. You know, people reached out to me to see if there was anything they could do for me. And that, that's a beautiful thing. And I reached out to them to see if there was anything I could do for them. And that's what it comes down to is like, we don't have to live in a world of lack. It doesn't have to be the dark place. It can be a place where it's very, very bright and things are very, very good. But you have to practice to get into that place. And if you're scared and desperate and freaked out right now, uh, the first place to look is in the mirror. And I know that's the hardest place to look sometimes, to look at yourself and go, what could I have done different in this circumstance to make this a little bit easier for myself and for the people I care about? That's excellent yeah. advice. Go ahead, Heidi. Oh, well, I was saying, and speaking of like the people you care about, like your son is very fortunate because he has a father who's going to bring him up with this with this way of thinking and with that kind of love and with that kind of relationship, and and I mean that's really a blessing because I'm I'm sure you know there's a lot of kids that don't get that, so um, I applaud yeah. you because he's going to be a he's, he's adorable. He's going to have a great attitude, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Heidi. I appreciate that. He's having a lot of fun right now. It's fun to watch. I'm like watching him in the background. Around. It's like, I want to come play. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the other, so the other cool thing is some of these things we're actually built with. Like, so I was talking about how you have to practice at having a good relationship, but kids are just so happy. It's almost like it gets beat out of us. Yeah. Oh, don't trust people. Oh, don't, don't talk to strangers. Oh, you're, you're just like, yeah, be aware, be, be aware and know that yes, people can hurt you and not to just leave all your decks on the table and tell everybody all your secrets, but people can also love you too. You know, they can be both. So be careful and be aware and do the best that you can and just enjoy people. Like, enjoy having the moment. Like, it was so cool watching people watch my son, you know, because he'll have a smile on his face. And some people absolutely love it. And then, you know, there's some people who are stone-faced, just like, 
I don't, oh, even a kid can't well, make me happy. Be. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, how could you be stone faced looking at that? Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I don't know. And I'm just like, I, I, well, I almost feel bad. Like, I almost want to give those people a hug. Like, oh, Aww. man, so a lot of people have hurt you. You need to some be love. So angry at, at a little kid. Like, he's just a happy little kid. Yeah. And he just, he is. He's an infectious ball of energy. And the crazy thing, all a coach does is remind you that you have that kid in you still. Like that kid who believes that they could, this kid will cry forever to get a, a chocolate chip cookie. Like, all right, you get the chocolate chip, yeah, <laughs> ah, 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 ah. I'm like, fine, just take the chocolate chip cookie. And if people were that persistent in their life to get to where they wanted to get, they absolutely would, every single time. He's a learning lesson back here. I'm going to try that on my next call with a client. <laughs> Please. Stop. Yeah, come on. Thank you. You know you want this. You know you do. You know you do. You Okay. Okay, I want it. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I'm so glad we had this call. This is making my day. <laughs> oh, you know what this is about? Exactly. That's what it's about. That sometimes when things are tough like they are and we're faced with some harsh realities, these are the types yeah. of calls you need. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I want to go back to one thing you said, uh, Clifford. You know, there's going to be people watching this that are going through the bottom of the pit right now. They're, they're going through some tough times. And, you know, one of the things you said was first thing you do is, you know, look in the mirror. What can you do yeah. different? What could you have done different? Yeah. What would you say from your position of being in, in a coaching position, what would you say, you know, besides looking in the mirror, what, what are the steps they should take? So ultimately, the first thing is to live in abundance. Sometimes that's the hardest thing to do. Because the person who is starving the most needs the most. And in order to to become that you have to become that here and that's so hard for a person who's lived in that victim mentality to really put together so i will say this no matter how you respond or how you act gravity is still gravity and so it's not to be like oh just be positive and go lucky and try and fly off a building because you believe in yourself <laughs> but what i will say <laughs> <laughs> what I will say is you can figure it out. You might not figure it out today and you might not figure it out tomorrow, but find clarity and what, and figure out what you want. And when you figure out what you want, then figure out how to get it. And when you do those two steps, everything else in the middle is going to come together one way or another. Absolutely. You know, I, I, I think that's a the a great part. Um, I'm actually for the for this exact purpose, and for people that have been talking with me, I'm working right now on creating a video training program just for to kind of deal with this. And yeah. my second video is exactly on what you just said, clarity, because yeah. so many people don't have that. And you know, what, for a lot of people, that clarity is going to be changing. You know, what they thought they were clear on six weeks ago is different because our realities are changing things are going to be different um absolutely but but that doesn't mean things are going to be terrible because we're going to come out of this there's going to be some incredible opportunities but there's also going to be some harsh realities that maybe what you are doing has to make a change and so i i 100 percent agree with you that clarity of who you are where you are where you're going is a major factor in determining all this yeah. You know what's so scary about this whole thing? Uh, being a coach, I realize how crazy I am. I'm nuts. I am. I, I know it. I know in it. In a good way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do it in my I, – I, I bring it – I take responsibility for it being the way that it is. But this whole thing, I have embraced it, and I love it. And this is why. People now realize they're going to die. They're realizing that. And so within realizing that either comes power or comes weakness. When I was five years old, my grandfather was buried 
and I was terrified, freaked out. And I'm like, wow, one day I'm going to die. I'm five and one day I'm going to die. And I held on to it because that was mine. No one could take that from me. Knowing that I'm going to die and knowing that I have to live every moment that I'm given to have gratitude for that and do my very best every single day that I can. And now that we're in this dark bubble that has partially been created by the media, <laughs> hopefully nothing happens to me for saying that, but <laughs> um, I feel comfortable in it because it reminds people, yeah, you're still human. You never lost your humanity. You never lost a human piece of you. There's fear and terror and doubt and uncertainty. It's always been there. It's just showing up now because you believe it. But that's what I saw in fighting. That's why I had to fight. I had to. I had to get in that cage because all of it came back. All that fear, all that uncertainty, all that doubt. That's how you get stronger than it. You don't get stronger than it by just thinking like, I think I can do anything. No, you go out and do it. It won't happen if you don't go out and do it. So when I would get nervous and terrified and freaked out and I'm like, oh my God, I'm getting my hands wrapped and this guy's going to, is, am I going to get my ass beat in front of everybody? Is, uh, what's going to happen? What's gonna, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just going to go do it because I said I was. I'm not going to let this thing dictate my life. I'm not going to let that happen ever. And that's what gets people in trouble every single time. And that's the problem with, oh, yeah, it's, it's all in the mindset. You just have to think big thoughts. Like, no, you've got to think and act big thoughts. Right. That's the hardest thing to do. Think I'm and act big thoughts. Think. I love that. Yeah, I'm glad this thing came. Because now, now we get to see how big we are. That's the beauty of it. We get to see who we are. It's a gift. That is That's awesome. Great way of looking at it. <laughs> thank Absolutely. You, thank you. And thank you for calling me a good nut, Heidi. I appreciate you. <laughs> I love nuts. I'm a nut in a good way. Yeah. I, I love Heidi's good my nuts. girl. So Jeff was already my guy. Now Heidi's my girl. Relationships building yeah. right here. <laughs> we will exactly. have to talk That's more right. after this. I, I look forward to, uh, to getting to know you better. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That is awesome. So we, we are limited on our time. So let's just talk a little bit more about what you're doing now. Tell us about what you're doing, what your practice is. You know, is it all, you're in Arizona here. Is it all one-on-one -on -one, face to face? Do you do anything virtual? Um, mostly for anyone that's watching this or listening to yeah. this, if they yeah. want to contact you, is that an option for them if they live in New York? You know, those sort of things. Let's talk about that. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So I can do it online. I can do it by phone. Um, I basically take you through a process. We get really, we figure you out first. It comes down to figuring you out. And a lot of people think they completely know themselves, but they don't because they don't take that inner work to really look at themselves. That's hard to do. We're so busy focused on the external world. It's hard to look into our internal world. Well, I'm going to put you under the microscope and look at your internal world and how your internal world affects your external world. And so if you want to get a hold of me, you can contact me on info at cliffordstarks.com. And you can also email me on Facebook Messenger. And I have a YouTube channel as well. So you can, you can reach out there. It's going to be a lot harder to get a hold of me on my channel, but you could if you wanted to. If you're a little shy or nervous and you don't feel comfortable having a direct conversation with me but ultimately yeah i work with i i take them through a strategy call just to see if we're a good fit for one another first and i explain the power of six and how the power of six can potentially help them get past the limiting beliefs or barriers that are in their way awesome did you talk about the power of six already or or, or, or because we've covered stuff, I don't remember that being said. Yeah, I didn't really talk about the power of six. Um, it's, it's basically the six principles that I work specifically on okay. to get people to really get out of their own way and really leave, live, live their, 
the life that they were meant to live. Okay. Yeah. Do you want, do, I guess you have to get an appointment with you to find out what those are. <laughs> yeah, you have to get a, you have to have an appointment with me. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. That'll Great. intrigue some people. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then, then once you, once you watch this and you're comfortable, you know, he's a great guy and all those sort of things, then you can go onto YouTube and find his fights and realize that, yeah, this is the guy you want in your corner too. <laughs> yep. I, I got your back. I'm constantly looking to grow, constantly looking to achieve and protect myself and the ones I care about. <laughs> awesome. Well, hey, it's it's been a pleasure to have this conversation and uh, talk about these things and I really, I really love your focus and thoughts around mindset. And I really encourage anyone that's listening to this that um, you reach out and touch base with Clifford because he knows his stuff and it can be a real benefit for what you're doing, especially in hard times like this. You know, we need yeah. ways to move forward. And that's definitely something he's very capable of. So thank you for spending the time with us. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. <laughs> All right. It was a blast. And educational. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> well, awesome. Thank you very much and have a great day. See you. You as well. Awesome. Well, thank you. That, yes. that was excellent. Yeah. Hey, real, yeah, real quick, Clifford. I, I, I looked you up on LinkedIn because I hadn't met you yet and before that. Uh -huh. and, and you actually had three LinkedIn profiles. Do you know that? I don't know if that's really? purposeful or yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, I'm pretty sure they're all you. They, they, they're all, they, like, I think you must have done one like a few years ago, then you did another one, then you did another one, but you might I want probably, to take a look at that, maybe merge them. I probably <laughs> did. Yeah, so I'm gonna, cause I have one specific LinkedIn that I, I work on. How, how do I delete the other two? Do you know? I don't know. I really don't know, but it, it, I don't, it, probably there must be like a, profile delete button i don't know i've never done it before okay. but i'm not sure okay. but yeah, you, google will know <laughs> yeah i'm That's gonna right. check that out yeah thank you thank you heidi i appreciate that yeah you're welcome and i'll uh, All right. i'll uh, message you and i'll send you a, a, a connection request on linkedin because that's okay. where i that's where i hang out the most yeah well it was great awesome. meeting you too yeah, yeah well thank, thank you, you both the have a great yeah, day for sure. Yeah, Thanks, guys. take care of yourself. Have a great one. It was bye a bye. pleasure. See you. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed that conversation with Clifford. Uh, he's an awesome guy. Please reach out to him. He has a lot to offer. Um, also, you know, we talked about everything that's going on right now with the coronavirus and businesses and how people are adapting and reacting. Um, I mentioned during the interview of a video series that I'm putting out that is going to be released Hopefully it's released by the time that this, uh, this podcast is released. So visit jeffhagey.com and you'll see where you can access that right at the top, uh, the Momentum video series. And, you know, it's a free series. It'll help you, as I mentioned in the call, it's going to really help you with your why and help you with your clarity and stuff like that. So I'd love to have you check that out at jeffhagey.com. Have a great day. Hey, thanks for being with us. I hope you enjoyed that episode and you got a lot of value out of it. Please subscribe and make sure you don't miss any future episodes. And please come visit our websites, jeffhagey.com and ecibfs.com. Thanks again for being with us and hope to see you next time.